Hello, it's Don Michelle from Boho Tarot, and welcome to another Mod With Me, where we create a deep and meaningful bond with the cards through creative expression and deck modification. Today we'll be trimming and edging the Art of Love Tarot. The Art of Love Tarot is another surprising favorite in my collection, for its softer tone and reaffirming nature aren't usually what I look for in a tarot deck. That's an aesthetic generally reserved for the decks in my Oracle collection. As I mentioned in my review of this deck, it almost didn't make it into my collection at all simply because of the title, because I assumed it to be a nice washing of the tarot. But The Art of Love is a deck with great substance, and it's especially attuned, at least in my tarot practice, to confronting your limiting beliefs and bringing self-love into awareness. As such, it is a deck that often makes its appearance on Sunday mornings during my self-care practice. As much as I enjoy the artwork and the messages found in the guidebook, the deck itself is a bit of a challenge for me to contend with. It's big and bulky with thick glossy cardstock, closer in size and weight to an oracle rather than a standard tarot deck. And although I enjoy the bigger images, the large border only adds to the heft of an already sizable deck. It is my hope that by trimming this deck down, turning it into a homemade borderless edition, that my small hands will better be able to manage this chunky deck. We begin this process, as I often do now, by measuring out where my first cut will be. I use a piece of washi tape to mark where my cards should line up so that I ensure to use the same measurements on all the cards. I'll be trimming this deck one side at a time, and although this process takes a bit longer than my previous nilly-willy hacking at the deck, I have found that I get a much more uniform and clean cut if I do all the cards one side at a time. I cut carefully the first time, making sure that my cut is exactly where I want it to be. If it's not, as it wasn't this time, I can go back and cut off a little more and adjust my tape guideline if needed. I rest my card against the top of the cutter to ensure that I did indeed cut a straight line. I'm happy with where my first cut was made, so now I move on to trimming the rest of the deck. Taking this time and working with the cards in this way really gives me a chance to see all the cards in this deck up close and in a variety of ways. The artwork in The Art of Love seems to always reveal something new to me. And even though I've seen these images, used this deck, Read with these cards a hundred times, I still find something new each and every time it finds its way to my reading table. While I am a fan of Tony Carmine Salerno's artwork, it is the keywords, surprisingly enough, that really tune this deck in for me. I'm generally not a fan of keywords on decks, but in this rare instance, for the most part, they really work for me. As I work my way through trimming this deck, moving from one side to the other, one card at a time, the titles and keywords linger in the back of my mind. I normally wouldn't hesitate to trim off the titles, to take a deck down to just its illustrations, but I think if I remove those keywords, if I take away those titles, the deck will lose some of its magic for me. Because it is as much the writings of the deck's curator, Denise Jarvie, that instills that connection. Removing her writings from the deck, removing those keywords, even the ones I don't necessarily agree with, would take away a key component of this deck's energy for me. So as much as I am generally game to remove titles and keywords, in this instance, I feel like it would be cutting away a piece of the deck's soul. So the titles will stay, the keywords will remain, and hopefully, despite my hacking away at the borders, this deck will retain its wonderful energy. With the cards now free from those top and side borders, I have a smaller, more manageable deck. I complete the trimming process by rounding the cards. I use the large corner rounder to give this deck an even softer, gentler feel. Because the cardstock is so thick, my rounder has a really difficult time clipping those corners, and I end up having to push really hard to get it to punch through. With so much force and effort needed to round these cards, I end up doing them in small batches throughout the day. With the corners finally rounded, the trimming process comes to an end. But to finish this deck off, to give it that polished look, I need to color the edges. While I considered using a metallic gold, I ended up choosing a brighter yellow to match the wonderful heart accent on the back of the deck. You might recognize this mild liner in yellow. It's the same one I used on my beloved Llewellyn. 
There's a bit less mess in choosing to use markers, as they do have a quicker drying time than, say, stamps, but the mild liners do provide a little bit of a grace period, which allows me to wipe off any excess and ensure that I don't overrun onto the front or back of the cards. Edging provides another wonderful opportunity for bonding with your deck. And as I've mentioned before, I often like to spend this time watching walkthroughs, reviews, and video impressions of the deck I'm edging. This helps to add another layer of understanding and connect with the deck. With the entire process complete, I now have a beautifully edged and mostly borderless edition of the Art of Love Tarot. Although trimming doesn't do much for the glossy cardstock, I have found that over time and with some wear, that stickiness will ease a bit. The more you handle these super glossy decks, the softer they seem to feel in your hands. Free from the majority of the border, this deck now feels a bit more intimate, the faces more prominent, the artwork even more vibrant and energetic than before. Thank you for joining me for this modification of the Art of Love Tarot. I hope you enjoyed this process and will join me again soon for more creative tarot for an inspired life.